So, 80s were a hell of a drug, weren't they? I just got done reading Elric of Melbourne, which I could summarize as Goth Superman. I got into it because I heard uh, Neil Gaiman talking about it in his short story collection, Smoke and Mirrors. Elric of Melbourne is a anti-Conan the Barbarian, a response to Conan the Barbarian. He's a sorcerer character who is born to, I guess, a race of elves. They're more a race of aliens that are barbaric in temperament. Uh, they are completely psychopathic. They kill people as they're eating meals for their lamentations, which they call their singing or their entertainment. And Elric is born to these sickly, um, with uh, albino, he has white hair, he has red eyes, he has hemophilia, he has pretty much every problem that a noble could have. He needs drugs to get out of bed in the morning, but and he's a sorcerer. And he uses his sorcery and all of his other powers to actually get good at the skills of fighting and what's expected of him from this barbaric warlike culture. Now, this book really succeeds at invoking that fantastical feeling of many 80s shows. Labyrinth and um, The Last Unicorn come to mind, where you feel like you're experiencing this great and noble and ancient fantasy of classic renown. Um, I think Mandalorian has actually captured that feeling a bit nowadays with shows, where there's this simplicity to it, but you're just experiencing this event that you can't really explain, and you feel the grandeur and awe of it. Uh, awesome is an appropriate word. And Elric really succeeds at that. Um, it tell It tries to turn his tale into a morality tale, where he is someone who has had to sit with his sickness for so long and consider what actions that his culture does. However, it kind of rings hollow to me at a couple times because he goes along with the culture because he has to, because he's emperor so often, um, that it kind of has comedic timing. Like once he's like, I need to consider this morality. So we caught some spies. Oh, then cut off their balls and throw them into the fire to use for as a spell to get their mind. And then we'll kill the barbarian hordes before they get to the gate. Don't set off the dragons, though. We don't want to wake them. Right. Morality. Um, which it feels true to a person who is caught by their culture. But nonetheless has, like, certain comedic undertones to it. Um, my big issues with the text, and why I think it's not considered a classic to this day, is that... Things just kind of happen in it. Um, and by that I mean, like, Elric gets knocked off his ship at one point in full armor. And he is low on drugs. He has, like, no strength left in his body. He can't swim. And he's like, well, I guess this is the end. Let me consider my entire life and let it flash before my eyes. Huh, I was a really shitty king. I didn't really do much aside from just kind of try to avoid my responsibilities. Even if I was trying to go against the psychopathic things, I probably should have done something. Wow, I won't be remembered fondly. And then right after that, this sea king, this elemental sea king, just kind of appears out of the water and says, Oh, hey, uh, by the way, I'm... I'm the Sea King, and I'd love to help you, because uh, the person who uh, will take over after you is a complete asshole. So we'd really prefer you instead. And he's like, oh, cool, in that case, yeah, get me out of here. And then that tension is just sort of resolved. Um, the, so there are just kind of moments like that all over the text, uh, even for the villain, who suddenly has like a secret weapon in between one chapter and the next, which is a mirror of memories. Um, things just sort of happen. Some of the things that should feel like they should feel like deus ex machina moments, just like all the others, don't. Uh, when Elric is saying his sorcery, there's this sense of the scene that really hit, hits hard. Michael Moorcock doesn't feel like he's planning out the scene ahead of time. It doesn't feel like he is, has some structure that he's building towards. It kind of just feels like he's writing these cool scenes that are legitimately really fun to get into. But a lot of them just don't make that much sense to me. Overall, it's still an amazing ride. I think I'm going to go back to the Elric stories whenever I either want to taste of the 80s or when I want to feel that mystical grandeur and awe. Um, and I can't wait to hang out with Goss Superman some other time and his sword Stormbringer, who I can't wait to see develop a personality of its own. I'm hoping that it's demonic. Oh, for those of you who are D&D &D fans, the sword Black Razor in D&D &D was actually based off of Stormbringer. Um, I wonder if Mornblade's going to come back. Oh, now I'm actually excited. Uh, anyway, that's it. See ya. Now I sing the goodbye song.
A mournful tune is me, but only two bars you will get. Oh God, this makes it three.